Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Aman Praveen and I'm a medical student in India. Today we'll be discussing about the axillary artery and the anastomosis around scapula. Watching the whole video is going to be really useful for you. So make sure you stay on. Today we'll be discussing about the arteries of the upper limb. Firstly, we'll be looking at the axillary artery. The axillary artery is divided into three parts uh, in which the pectoralis major overlaps the axillary artery and divides it into three parts. The proximal first part, the part which is below the muscle, the second part, and the part which is distal, which is the third part. It is quite easy to remember all the branches of the axillary artery. The first part has one branch, the second part has two branches, and the third part has three branches. The axillary artery is one of the content of the axilla, and the axillary vein runs medial to the axillary artery. The first part gives off the superior thoracic artery, which supplies the thoracic cage and the breast. The second part gives off two branches. First one is the thoracoacromial trunk, which gives off four branches. It can be remembered as ABCD or APCD. A stands for the acromial branch, P stands for the pectoral branch, C stands for the clavicular branch, and D stands for the deltoid branch. And then we have the lateral thoracic artery, which, uh, which runs laterally to the pectoralis major. The third part has three branches. Two of the branches which surround the surgical neck of the humerus. It is the anterior circumflex humeral artery and the posterior circumflex humeral artery. These two wind around the shaft of the humerus and supply the bone. The largest branch of the axillary artery is the subscapular artery which supplies the scapular region. The nerve to latissimus dorsi runs along the subscapular artery and the axillary nerve runs along the posterior circumflex humeral artery. Now let's brush up on the clinical aspects of axillary artery. When the shoulder is dislocated, the head of the humerus goes and compresses the second part of the axillary artery. What will happen then? The blood flow will stop and it might lead to, you know, necrosis of the limb. To inhibit that, naturally anastomosis occurs with the first part of the subclavian artery and the third part of the axillary artery. Uh, to ensure that if there is any other compromise of the blood supply, these anastomotic branches supply and compensate the blood supply of the upper limb. Now let's look into the cadaveric image of the axillary artery. As you can see here, this is the axillary artery running and this is the second part which is below the pectoralis minor. From the first part you can see the superior thoracic artery running and supplying the thoracic cage. And then from the second part we can see the thoracoacromial trunk or the thoracoacromial artery which gives off the acromial branch, pectoral branch, clavicular branch, and the deltoid. What do you think about this video? Make sure to leave a comment. And then the second branch of the second part of the axillary artery is the lateral thoracic artery, which runs laterally to the thoracic cage, as you can see, and it supplies the mammillary gland. The third part has three branches. The first branch is the anterior circumflex humeral artery and then the posterior circumflex humeral artery which together anastomosis. And then we have the thick largest branch of the axillary artery which is the subscapular artery which goes behind and supplies the scapular region. And then the axillary artery continues as the brachial artery. Now let's look into the anastomosis around scapula. The anastomosis around the scapula uh, 
ensures that blood is continuously supplied to the upper limb uh, when when there is compromising of the blood supply in the second part of the axillary artery. Uh, the anastomosis mainly connects the first part of the subclavian artery to the third part of the axillary artery. There are three sites in which the anastomosis occurs around the scapula. The first site is the acromial anastomosis and then an anastomosis occurs in the body of the scapula and at the inferior angle. The first part of the subclavian artery gives off a main artery known as the thyrocervical trunk and from this thyrocervical trunk comes the suprascapular artery. Suprascapular artery it is named because you see it is above the scapular region and from that an acromial branch appears. That acromial branch anastomoses with the posterior circumflex humeral artery. You see the posterior circumflex humeral artery gives off an acromial branch and as we know from the second part of the axillary artery comes the uh, acromial branch of the thoracoacromial trunk which together anastomoses. Another branch from the thyrocervical trunk is the transverse cervical artery. From the transverse cervical artery, there are two branches. One is the superficial branch and another one is the deep branch. The deep branch runs along the medial side of the scapula and supplies the body of the scapula and runs to the inferior angle. The deep branch is otherwise known as dorsal scapular artery. From the third part of the axillary artery comes the subscapular artery and the subscapular artery anastomoses with the dorsal scapular artery at the inferior angle and forms an anastomosis and from the, and from the subscapular artery arises the circumflex scapular artery which surrounds the scapula and anastomoses with the uh, branches from the dorsal scapular artery. Now let's look into the cadaveric images. As you can see here, this is the subclavian artery and this is the thyrocervical trunk. From the thyrocervical trunk comes the suprascapular artery which goes to the acromial process giving off the acromial branch and then comes the transverse cervical artery which uh, gives off a deep branch known as the Make sure to click that subscribe button and put a thumbs up known as the dorsal scapular artery which runs till the inferior angle and as you can see from the posterior circumflex humeral artery a branch arises and goes to the acromial process. From This is the subscapular artery which runs till the inferior angle and anastomosis with the dorsal scapular artery and gives off the body branches and anastomosis with it. This is the circumflex scapular artery as it you know circumcises the scapula. And as always, thanks for watching. There is a lot of effort put into this video and I hope you enjoyed this. And as always, be awesome.